I'm gonna open up my review with a super embarrassing Pearl Jam story that dates back to my early teenage years around 2006. So I would hear the band's name said quite often on the rock station that I would listen to, and I remember hearing their name and thinking that it was somehow risque or something. And why would I think that, you might ask? Well, apparently I'd seen so many tampon ads on TV that I somehow associated Tampax Pearl with Pearl Jam, and thought the band name had something to do with feminine care products. <sighs> These are the repressed memories I live with. Hey neighbor, welcome back to ARTV. I'm John, and today I'm reviewing the 11th album from the grunge rock veterans Pearl Jam. With so much time passing since their last record, Lightning Bolt, that was solid but not something that I really ever came back to, at least not in full, here we are at Gigaton, seven years later. Eddie Vedder is the last vocalist standing from the Big Four and Grunge, which kind of scares me to even think about. Protect that man and his powerful voice at all costs, people. These are scary times, and here on Gigaton, it's clear that they've found a renewed sense of energy that feels important to tap into. While I love and respect the hell out of the Seattle Rockers, there's sections of their back catalog that I'm just not a huge fan of. Their albums like Ten, Vitology, or even a fair bit of Avocado, which was my jumping on point, are all records I keep in rotation, but I really just don't see them as a full album band, at least not all the time. More so just a consistent group that I know I'll at least dig a few songs from anytime they put out a new record. I was braced for disappointment after listening to the lead single Dance of the Clairvoyance a few times. Something just didn't quite click, even though the experimentation was appreciated, but slowly but surely that song has worked its way into my head, and I'd find myself shouting the positive, positive lyric at random times. Super Blood Wolf Moon dropped, and I can't say that it's the most groundbreaking track in their career or anything, but it gets the job done and cleans house as a swelling hard rocker. Gigaton was shaping up to be pretty odd and possibly all over the place. And while some of that definitely turned out to be true, there's a lot of politics and music to unpack that make the album worthwhile if you're patient with it. Much of Pearl Jam's 11th outing can feel tattered and broken, not just due to a lack of cohesion here and there, but more so because I get the feeling of talking to a weary traveler when listening to Gigaton. Life puts you through the ringer in order to teach you lessons you probably never wanted to learn, yet out of that comes wisdom that now flows forth like some sort of prophecy from Vedder's lips. Often you'll feel more compelled by the lyrics or the subtle hesitations in his voice than the actual instrumentation, which tends to land on the dull side of this fence of reinvention. There's gusto in bursts, but the sudden shifts in tone are a bit hard to grapple with when the album's at its worst. You're gonna hear a lot of people using the word experimental when describing Gigaton, and while I guess that's sort of accurate to a degree, it's not really a change that's gonna have you fainting because you don't even recognize Pearl Jam anymore. I would say that this is definitely an easily recognizable band that are well into their career, and they definitely took some risks here. I applaud that. But a risk or a new sound doesn't exactly mean that this is some sort of giant leap away from their core sound. Jeff Ament and Stone Gossard are the two members outside of Vetter that stood out the most to me, with Jeff in particular nailing some of these bass licks that give the track some real backbone, and Gossard lays down the law alongside Mike McCready for some hammering solos, some standout guitar moments that actually pick things up and get you actively involved in the sound. The band's catalog has its ups and downs, its positives and negatives, if you will. Check out my buddy Crash Thompson's video on how to get into Pearl Jam for more on that. But after spending some time with their new record, I wouldn't at all classify this among the wavelengths of disappointments many of their fans have come to expect. Gigaton is worth hearing in full multiple times to get the full effect, but it can get tedious. Some are gonna vehemently oppose the political aspects of the album, but considering the dipshit we have in office in the States, can you really blame them? It's not like this is a sudden change, of course. They were very outspoken about their criticisms of the Bush administration, and now Trump is referenced by name on Quick Escape, as Vetter explores the possibility of life on Mars on the album's biggest highlight. The commentary isn't always that straightforward, but there's plenty of signals you can probably easily decode if you break out the lyrics while listening. Outside of politics, there's definitely some soul-searching in the lyrics that can feel like a barren wasteland. It's good to step back inside of their world for the first time in what feels like forever. But I do feel that they overstay their welcome on what is now their longest album to date, and I really don't feel that it needed to be. There's slow burners that never fully connect to their full potential, explorations on electronics that don't fire on all cylinders, and some inconsistencies in the tone and quality that have Gigaton feeling a bit like a pirate ship lost at sea, but the more I hear it, at least in places, maybe that's part of the charm? 
They picked a hell of a way to jumpstart the record and make you feel invested, as whoever said is a killer track featuring these vigorous guitars and gritty vocals that prove Vedder's voice hasn't faded gently into the night. Packing in this much heat into a 5 minute opener sets the bar high, and while I wouldn't say that they shot themselves in the foot by doing that, I do think that this along with the singles gave me a certain expectation of what was to come that wasn't really fulfilled. Never Destination and Super Blood Wolf Moon are two of the most high strung servings Gigaton has to offer, and in the moment I think that they're pretty enjoyable, easy to rock out to even, I mean it's always great to hear some shredding on a Pearl Jam track, but just thinking ahead, I don't know that these songs have the wow factor that's going to make me come back to them a lot in the future. All Right really ties together some of the big picture themes of the album. There's a heartbeat monitor shown on the artwork, and they speak about the heart and the matters of the mind here. Some really melancholic keys linger in the atmosphere, and the tasteful acoustics work really well when paired with Vedder's graceful voice. In fact, one of my favorite lyrics from the entire album is On All Right. Find your groove in the sound, keep it for yourself. More Comfort opens up on Retrograde, which, outside of the undying spirit found on the guitar-fueled Quick Escape, is the other key track you really cannot miss. Retrograde shoots the mind straight to space, as did Quick Escape, but instead of Mercury in Retrograde, we're treated to a simmering meditation on climate change and the uncertain future this planet is facing. Buckle Up, along with Comes Then Goes, are back to back at the tail end of the album, and sadly, this is the combo I can point to for what I didn't like about the record. I just found their dreariness less than compelling, just a bit too bland to stand out from the other slow burn tracks on Gigaton. I think All Right and the finally released album closer River Cross are much better at the intricacies of taking your time getting to the end of the road. Those won't be forgotten, these will. They're not the grunge rockers they once were, although I do hear traces of that sound. I would say cue this up when you're in the mood for something pensive. You might not love it overnight, but I do feel that this is the band's best effort in 14 years since the Avocado record. I'll rate Gigaton a 3.5 out of 5. I think the slow burn effect sort of paid off because this album found favor the more closely I listened. Did you appreciate the band's step out of bounds into something more thoughtful, or was it just a snoozer you're not going to come back to? I gave my take, so let me hear yours in the comments below. If you'd like to check out my old ass review of Lightning Bolt, then you can tap this card here, or you can catch another rock review by clicking here. Donate on Patreon to help support this channel if you'd like to, that's on screen too, or else link down below, and follow me on Instagram at ARTVJohn.